He's orchestrating that whole huddle. You go this way, I go this way. Don't worry, we'll get in. <laughs> there you see the particulars. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. 14 to nothing. Indianapolis out in front. It is third down, but I would almost uh, say, Skip, this is uh, this is four down territory. Oh, I, I don't know if there's a choice here. You're down 14 nothing. Wayne State also with two timeouts left. The handoff, Gillard up the middle, and nothing there. Stop denied. Ted Munson, the defensive tackle number 51, was the first to hit Gillard. And the clock is stopped once again. Dominic Livadotti is out on the field, and he is going to bring his whole offensive team over to talk about this fourth and one play call. Well, the problem with this play and with a lot of plays down in the goal line is as you as people would talk in, in the coaching in the box from tight end to tight end a tackle a tackle first of all he's juggling the ball as he's coming because it looks like he's looking at the defenders but there's too many people to block inside this tackle to tackle area Pete the other thing that you have a problem with the fact that Earl Reese the fullback number six was moved from safety to right. fullback his blocking may not be where you want it. And by the same token, Indianapolis knows that he's just moved over. You know he's not going to carry the mail. Well, there you go. So now you're left with the option of, okay, we're going to give it to Arnie Gillard or we're going to throw. And throwing in and around the goal line, Skip, you know there's yeah. not that much room. Well, but I'll tell you what, I like. I, I have to go on a type of rollout, a play-action rollout, go to Bush's side, put some pressure, maybe have the kid run it in or go to Bush. Uh, I don't know. I can't see them running the football. You know what I like down here, and we haven't seen it? I'd almost like an option. But we haven't seen any option out of this team today. Fourth and goal on the one. Earl Reese is the fullback. Gillard the tailback. Bush in motion. The toss to Gillard, and he falls down. He falls down. And Dominic Livadotti tosses his notebook in the air. And this play looked like it had a chance. It looked like it had a chance. They were bringing everybody to the near side, including Nate Bush, to maybe get a crackback block. And unlike the pros, where if your knee touches without contact, you can get back yeah. up, in college football, that is not the case. Look at this. Definitely had a chance. The hole was there for a second, and Gillard goes to a knee at the four-yard line. And, you know, we were down on the field prior to the game, and it wasn't... It didn't seem like it was a slippery surface or that the early morning frost had anything to do with the, the field being but perfect. The field was perfect. Kevin Kreenhagen sneaks it forward to about the nine-yard line as the clock moves inside now of 43 seconds to play here in the first half. And Indianapolis apparently will get out of this first half with a 14-0 lead and no damage caused by Wayne State on the scoreboard. A lot of missed opportunities actually on both sides. Yes, sir. And a kneel down by Kreenhagen, and that will do it for a first half. And uh, a first half that will not please Wayne coach Dominic Livadotti. And I don't want to say it's only 14, but it is only 14, nothing. I mean, teams have come back and scored more than 14 points in a half. And he, this could be 28, Pete. It very easily could have been, and let's not forget that Wayne State did stop Indianapolis twice inside the 10-yard line. Otherwise, it, as you said, it could have been a lot worse, and they also got a blocked field goal. So we have come to the end of the first half here at Wayne State Stadium, and the crowd uh, a little bit on the quiet side. This is not what they expected to see. The home team down 14-0 after one half. We'll be right back after these messages. You're watching Tartar Football on WWJ-TV, Detroit's 62 CBS. It's here. What is? More big time TV. Detroit 62 CBS is bigger than ever. With me, Jerome Seinfeld. Five nights a week at 6 on 62 CBS. It's Seinfeld. It's big. And hey, don't forget hard copy weeknights at 7 and a current affair at 7.30. Together again. Now there's more big time TV on Detroit 62 CBS. It's 62. 
champion used on a world. The Giant. The Giant on Crash It at 16 and a half miles. When Detroit wants high quality used cars, trucks, and minivans, champion used auto world is the place. The Giant. Just look. Here they are. Just look at this top quality price and payment. Remember this number and call us now at champion used auto world. There's only one giant. Champion used auto world. Call us now. A whole world of used vehicles on sale this week on Crash It at 16 and a half miles. If hair loss is affecting the way you feel about yourself, then do something about it. It always looks good, really. And, and it doesn't matter if it's wet or dry, it's, it, it's my hair. Uh, no more bald spots to cover, it's great, it, it really is. Looks just the way it did before I started losing it. And no matter how close you get, you can't tell. I mean, it looks like it's growing right out of my head, doesn't it? My advice to anyone that's thinking of, of making the change to do something about their hair loss is, is go for it. The process is really reliable when it comes to water sports. Haven't any trouble with it at all. The best part is, I can do anything I want. All the things I used to do. Because it's my hair. Call Shearpoint now for more information at 1-800-432-0062. Operators are standing by. Go ahead, take that first step. I did. For more big-time TV like Tempest, weekdays at 4, Punk 62 CBS. Back at Wayne State Stadium, the Tartars trailing the Greyhounds from the University of Indianapolis 14 to nothing. And down on the field, Lee Anthony. Uh, Lee, that was not the way to end the first half. Absolutely not, Pete. Not, a, not the way to end the first half. Two INTs, two fumbles, zero points, and a defense that stayed on the football field all game. Coaching staff is very up in arms with their players at this time. Hopefully they can resolve the mental mistakes that happened during the first half. Um, we're going to take a timeout. Uh, then let's go back upstairs to Pete and Skip, who are standing by with athletic director Bob Brennan. All right, thanks a lot, Lee. We are going to talk, Bob, uh, talk to Bob Brennan yeah. in a moment. Uh, 14 to nothing, we were very anxious to get his perspective on what happened here in this first half. But right now, I think there's going to be some heavy talking in the locker room. Well, yeah, I would imagine there is. First year coach Dom, uh, he's going to be very upset, and, uh, and rightfully so, because it's your senior, you know, Nate Bush that's caused some problems here. And here's a, here's a wonderful kid. Here's a kid that they want to get the ball in his hands, and unfortunately today, for some reason, the ball's on the grass. I, you know, Nate's just not, he's not this type of ball player, but these things happen. Well, they're only down 14 nothing. We will talk with Wayne State athletic director Bob Brennan after we step aside for this timeout. GYN, Sinai Hospital. Nancy Rain, Ambulatory Surgery Nurse, Wyandotte Hospital and Medical Center. At Health Alliance Plan, there's an important service we provide. You won't find it listed anywhere. You will find it on the faces of every HAP physician and medical professional you visit. It's caring. Caring about your well-being. It's important because when you feel well, we feel good. Health Alliance Plan, generations ahead. About 60% of the students who come here have graduated in the top 20% of their high school class, so it's lively. And the students are here to learn. They're serious about learning. 
the curriculum is broad. 300 different degree programs for students to explore and a very diverse student body. It's a lively place. It's a, a serious place. Uh, and education is what we do best in an urban setting. It's a beautiful day here at Wayne State Stadium on Academics Day. Uh, the result of the game thus far hasn't been perhaps as beautiful as we would like. Right now, Wayne State trailing the University of Indianapolis 14 to nothing as we take a look at the Wayne State marching band and a panoramic view of the Detroit skyline and the adjoining campus here at Wayne State. And uh, Pete Pranica along with Skip Mackholtz and Bob Brennan, the athletics director here at Wayne State. And uh, Bob, your impressions of the first half so far? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Pete. Now, uh, that was a great intro, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, we've played better. And, uh, you know, we've uh, actually, we're fortunate to be just uh, where it is. Uh, it could have been worse. Uh, we've made, made a lot of errors, uh, some uh, senior errors, uh, as Skip has uh, alluded to. And, uh, you know, we just need to get better. You know, that's all there is to it. You know, Coach, you, you really got lucky. You know, I spent some time with Coach Dom this week and was in on a couple of meetings. And, you know, with Brian Van Gorda leaving in, in the middle of recruiting, the middle of really the middle of the mo most important time of the yes, year, sir. that you had the opportunity to get a fellow of, of, of this guy's caliber. Well, Dom, Dom is a real uh, fine, you know, uh, mm -hmm. fine gentleman, and he's going to do a good job for us. And as you know, uh, when Brian came, we had some real horses. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, you know, we had the horses, and Brian did a great job in putting them together. Uh, I'm not sure we have the same type of horses mm -hmm. now, but uh, these student athletes yeah. are going to do well, and Dom's going to do well because I think he's going to uh, recruit uh, not only good uh, yeah. ath athletes, but good students, good people. You know, I think that's the key. He comes from suburbia Detroit. He's coached in this area. I think it's going to be great for recruiting. I, I think so, too. And I think Dom and his staff will work on it. It's a very young staff. You know, when you change coaches, as you know, a lot of things, uh, uh, you know, change with it. And uh, But I think Dom has good, done a fine job in uh, putting it together. We, you know, we're not playing very well today, but uh, I look for better of things in the second half, to be honest with you. Uh, what about, so, uh, today is Academics Day, and I think we always hear so much about academics and athletics. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what is being celebrated today and what is being honored today? Well, we're pretty proud of the program we have. You know, uh, last semester we had 257 student athletes, and we had 123 at 3.0 or better. And the average the average grades for an uh, athlete at Wayne State right now is 2.89. And you know, it's, you know, Pete, that's pretty, pretty good. I would assume that not only do you enroll a quality student athlete, but there's got to be a tremendous support and some tremendous infrastructure to give them some additional time. Because uh, I know Skip spent a lot of time in the library. <laughs> he didn't need any tutoring. Oh, but, I uh, you, I take a beat here. <laughs> well, you, but, know, you deserve it, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, we do have a tremendous uh, uh, support facilities here because uh, we have one of the finest learning centers I've ever seen. We're able to get the youngsters over there. We test them all on the uh, uh, on the Nelson Denny reading test when they come in, so we know who may need help in reading, who and who needs it, gets it, etc. And we have a program we put together here called the AAA. Actually, it's uh, uh, academics plus athletics equals achievement. And uh, you know we believe it here at Wayne State, and I, I think I think they're compatible. I think you know today may not be a, a good time to look at the what we're doing on the field, but all of our programs in the last four years have uh, become better, not only academically but uh, uh, athletically. I mean, you know, uh, women's softball going to the NCAA's volleyball, uh, men's basketball to the Final Four a few years ago, et cetera. And so you know we're very very proud of our overall program here. You know the facilities have been fixed up. We've got a lot of help from the administration in doing that and uh, I think that uh, it's unfortunate we don't get a lot more people at these games because this is the greatest view of Detroit uh, as you know from the Renaissance building right up to the Fisher building that you can see so a little bit more, Bob, about this AAA program. What actually is involved? Well, we're involved with the Learning Center. And what we do with the Learning Center is people who have problems, we'll send them over there. They'll help with tutoring. They'll set up programs. They'll set up computer programs, et cetera, to ensure that these youngsters get the support that they need to do better. And that's, uh, that's what we're all about. You know, uh, we're as much educated as we feel as they are of the people talk, uh, you know, teaching in those classrooms. 
and uh, we just think that's a tremendous aspect that we have here at Wayne State because this is a great academic institution and that's what we have to sell and uh, we can do them both. We can be good academically as well as athletically and I think we're proving that right now. You know, Bob, it's been eight years now since we started these games and you really can see a difference down here on campus. Well, you know, uh, like I said, the administration has done a fine job in helping to do a lot of things and uh, we've been able to do some things uh, thank God uh, with the facilities if you came in and look at our gymnasium now uh, it's gorgeous